Welcome, I'm Greg, the creator of Bible Flock Box, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 incredible Bible facts to blow your mind. Fact number one, the Bible is the best-selling book of all time. A survey by the Bible Society concluded that around 2.5 billion copies were printed between 1815 and 1975, but more recent estimates put the number at more than 5 billion, and the whole Bible had been translated into 349 languages. 2,123 languages have at least one book of the Bible in that language. Fact number two, the Bible was written over a long period of time by various men. The Bible was written over a 1600 year period by approximately 40 men. The time of the writing was from 1500 BC to AD 100. About 30 authors contributed to the Old Testament and 10 to the New Testament. These men varied greatly in their occupations. For example, Isaiah was a prophet, Ezra was a priest, Matthew was a tax collector, John was a fisherman, Paul was a tent maker, Moses was a shepherd, and Luke was a physician, to name a few. Despite being penned by different authors over 16 centuries, the Bible does not contradict itself. Bible scholars claim this is evidence that the Bible is truly inspired by God, as is claimed by 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, which states, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Fact number three, the Bible claims to be God's word. There are many books written about and by various religions, but the Bible is the only one which claims to be the actual word of God. Those who believe the Bible also believe that God inspired various people through the years to write down his actual words for mankind. The Bible says more than 3,000 times, thus saith the Lord. It claims that the words which follow are quotes from God. Fact number four, Jesus did not author any books of the Bible. As a matter of fact, he wrote nothing in the Bible at all. However, there is an ancient letter that purports to have been written from Jesus. It is known as the letter to King Abdgar. Abdgar was a real king who ruled from AD 9 to AD 46 in what is modern day Turkey. As the story goes, King Abdgar wrote first to Jesus requesting a miracle saying, And when I heard all those things about you, I considered that you are either God himself who has come down from heaven to act like this, or that you are the Son of God doing such things. Therefore, I am writing to you and ask you to visit me and cure my illness. Incidentally, I have heard that the Jews are grumbling about you and wish you harm. I have a city, rather small but noble, and it is sufficient for us both. It is recorded that Jesus replied by means of a courier, he began the letter by a saying that is found in John's Gospel. Blessed are you who has believed in me without having seen me. Jesus, according to his letter, declined Abgar's invitation because he had not fulfilled his ministry. However, Jesus wrote that he would send one of his disciples after his ascension so that he may cure your illness and give life to you and to those who are with you. The story had a happy ending according to the 4th century church father Eusebius. He said that Jesus' disciple Thaddeus went to Abdgar and healed him. Fact number five, the Bible predicted the rise and fall of world ruling empires hundreds of years in advance. In the book of Daniel, specifically in chapters two and seven, the kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome are represented by various symbols. For example, in Daniel chapter two, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of a statue with a golden head, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and feet part of iron and part of clay. In verse 38, Daniel, the prophet of God, told Nebuchadnezzar that his kingdom is represented by the head of gold. And he goes on to say that the rest of the metals in the statue correspond to succeeding world ruling empires. And it's amazing how accurate those comparisons are. For example, the Medo-Persian Empire came after Babylon and it was made up of a two-part coalition of the Medes and the Persians, just like the two arms of silver in the statue. And interestingly enough, all taxes in the Middle Persian Empire were paid in silver. The Kingdom of Greece corresponds to the thighs of bronze in the sense that Greek soldiers were called brazen coated because their armor was all bronze. The Roman Empire corresponds to the legs of iron in the sense that it was very strong and enduring so much so that historians have even referred to it as the Iron Monarchy of Rome. However, the Roman Empire came to an end in AD 476 
at the hands of barbarian tribes who divided it into 10 territories, corresponding to the 10 toes in the feet of iron and clay. Those 10 territories have evolved into what we recognize as the different countries of Europe today. Interestingly enough, iron and clay don't mix. And this corresponds to the fact that all throughout history, leaders such as Charlemagne, Napoleon, Kaiser Wilhelm, Mussolini, and Hitler have fought to build a new European empire, but these words of scripture have stopped them dead in their tracks every single time. Some have dismissed the book of Daniel as a forgery, claiming that there's no possible way anyone could have predicted these historic events. But the Dead Sea Scrolls, discovered in 1952 and dating back to 200 years before Christ and the Roman Empire, include the prophecies of Daniel. Do you want to know one more prophecy mentioned in Daniel chapter 2? Jesus is coming back soon. Are you ready? Speaking about dividing Europe, verse 44 states, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Fact number six, the Bible is scientifically accurate. The Bible never claims to be a scientific textbook. Nevertheless, the Bible claims to be true from the beginning. So every specific reference about science must be accurate. Over the centuries, the Bible has been rigorously tested for scientific accuracy, and it has never failed. For example, for thousands of years, people believed that the earth was flat. But God said 2,600 years ago in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 that the earth is circular. For thousands of years, people believed something held the earth up. Hindus believed huge elephants did it. The Greeks believed Atlas did it. The Egyptians believed five columns held the earth up. The Bible never says that anything is holding this planet up. For thousands of years, people believed that the number of stars were finite. But Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 22 says the number of stars can't be counted. Jonah chapter 2 verses 5 through 6 speak about the mountains of the ocean floor. Only in the last century have we discovered that there are towering mountains and deep trenches in the depths of the sea. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says God created us from the dust of the ground. Scientists have discovered that the human body is comprised of some 28 base and trace elements all of which are found in the earth. Fact number seven, the Bible is historically accurate. The Bible has proven to be more historically and archeologically accurate than any other ancient book. It has been subject to the minutest scientific textual analysis possible to humanity and has been proven to be authentic in every way. For example, the discovery of the Ibla archive in Northern Syria in the 1970s has shown the biblical writings concerning the patriarchs to be viable. The Hittites were once believed to be a biblical legend, until their capital and records were discovered at Bogatskoy, Turkey. It was once claimed there was no Assyrian king named Sargon, as recorded in Isaiah chapter 20 verse 1, because his name was not known in any other record. Then Sargon's palace was discovered in Khorsabad, Iraq. The very event mentioned in Isaiah chapter 20, his capture of Ashdod, was recorded on the palace walls. Fact number eight, today's Bible is very accurate. Compared to the earliest manuscripts of the Bible, the Bible we read today is very accurate. Some people have claimed that the Bible is not trustworthy because some of the oldest manuscripts don't agree with each other, or it has been translated from other languages and has been copied over and over. However, between 80 to 85% of all the manuscript evidence is in total agreement. Those errors that do occur in some manuscripts here and there have been easily filtered out through the process of textual criticism. Textual criticism simply means comparing those texts with differences to what the majority of texts say and disregarding those differences, because the majority is probably right. Therefore, we can rest assured that the Bible we read and study today is identical in doctrine to the one the New Testament Christians read and studied. Also, translating the Bible to other languages has made little to no difference in terms of the overall doctrines of the Bible. For instance, I read from an English Bible, the King James Version to be exact, but I live in Poland and there is no noticeable difference between how I understand my Bible and how my Polish friends in church understand their Bible, 
we are in general agreement upon what the Bible teaches. Fact number nine, the Bible has dramatically changed many lives. Reading the Bible has changed the lives of many people. Some of these people include John Bunyan. John Bunyan was a foul-mouthed, poorly educated English youth who was marvelously converted and became a preacher. Jailed for his preaching, he wrote what became one of the greatest bestsellers of the English world, Pilgrim's Progress, as well as one of the most read autobiographies, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners. John Newton This slave trafficker in Africa was wondrously converted from his wicked lifestyle and eventually became an Anglican preacher. He is known worldwide for the most often sung testimony of all time, the hymn Amazing Grace. Fanny Crosby Blinded by a doctor's quack treatment of her eye infection as a young girl, Fanny Crosby nevertheless resisted bitterness and trusted Christ's mercy. She became a teacher and then wrote many popular American songs and more than 8,000 hymns, many of which are still sung in churches worldwide today. Examples include Blessed Assurance, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, and Praise Him, Praise Him. And myself, I led a criminal life revolving around drug dealing until my imprisonment in 2002. I came to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior in prison, and He has changed my life. After eight years in federal prison, I was released and immediately deported to Poland. Now I make YouTube videos to help people come to know Jesus. Fact number 10, there is a Bible called the Wicked Bible. It includes a terrible typographical error in the Ten Commandments omitting the word not in Exodus chapter 20 verse 14, which originally reads, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Therefore, the Wicked Bible reads, Thou shalt commit adultery. The printers were fined 300 pounds sterling for their typographical error. The lot of 1,000 copies were ordered destroyed, but only a handful escaped destruction, making them the rarest of rare. There is one currently on sale for $99,500. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to check out my past videos on my channel page and like me on Facebook as well. I share more Christian content there. God bless.